Our team at Digital Archival Forensic Services, Inc. has recently completed our review of the Elizabeth County Historical Society's digital holdings, and we strongly recommend the incorporation of digital forensics into the Society's current digital preservation policies. In this presentation, members of our team, Elizabeth Boucher, Rose Medlock, Nikki Hosang, Nate Owens, and Monica Winters, will address the benefits of utilizing digital forensics in the discovery, recovery, and validation of digital data coming to ECHS on various digital storage media. The continuing development of digital information technologies has impacted cultural heritage institutions in a major way, as the number of born digital records being created with historic, cultural, and evidential value has grown exponentially over the past 20 years. In fact, about 90% of our records today are born digital. The ECHS is not immune to these changes and has experienced a steady growth in the number of digital records being accessioned each year. These records are coming to the Society on a number of digital storage media, including floppy disks, zip disks, memory sticks, thumb drives, hard drives, CD-ROMs, and more. Recently, ECHS has received an especially valuable donation a hard drive belonging to a prominent Native American artist and Elizabeth County resident, containing several hundred images, both digital photographs and digital art, created over roughly 15 years from 1995 to 2010. This collection is significant not only in terms of its artistic value, but also as a historical and cultural heritage resource and deserves our best preservation efforts. However, there are several technical challenges to be overcome in order to accomplish this goal. Digital records present archivists and curators with unique preservation challenges that aren't seen with analog records. These new challenges have likewise given rise to new preservation tools and methods that must be incorporated into curatorial practice. Elizabeth County Historical's most recent acquisition is particularly challenging because we are working to preserve and manage digital material that has been created and stored on various devices and in various file formats before ultimately being transferred to this hard drive. Because these files have survived multiple migrations, and because they are valuable works of art, the recovery and validation of the original records is a crucial first step in their preservation. Digital forensics provides a suite of tools and techniques for accomplishing this process. Digital Forensics is a forensic-based analytical software for born digital materials that focuses on the discovery, recovery, and validation of information from computer systems, information that is often not immediately visible to common users. This process allows caretakers to recover files that may have been altered, deleted, encrypted, or damaged before accession, and validate original digital records down to their bits. Originally, the tools and methods used to undertake digital forensics were designed for use in criminal investigation, but digital forensics has proven incredibly valuable to the archival and cultural heritage fields as well. It was named one of the top 10 digital preservation developments of 2010 by the Library of Congress, and a 2012 study by UNC notes that it has been successfully employed in archives to establish provenance, original order, chain of custody, and identify sensitive information. The implementation of digital forensics at ECHS will serve as a helping aid to validate the preservation status of electronic records. A digital forensic strategy is crucial to the proper preservation of this valuable art collection and will continue to benefit the ECHS as its digital collections continue to grow. Makers and users alike have always understood the need for proper preservation techniques. As the innovative creators of technologies, makers began an unintentional cultivation of their role in the process of providing information to the masses amid the excitement of the dawn of the digital age. Meanwhile, as their counterparts toiled away on various hardware and software contrivances, users began interacting with the tools. Users were and are those who operate inventions according to their purpose and possess first-hand knowledge of successes and failures of strategies. 
As computers and other technologies evolved through the decades, the definitions separating makers and users blurred. In some cases, the two groups moved between roles as necessary. For example, Rebecca Gunther and Leslie Myrick, authors of archiving websites for preservation and access, fit in both categories. When their article was published in 2007, Gunther was a networking and standards specialist for the Library of Congress, while Myrick was a digital publications manager at UC Berkeley. Forming a solid definition of makers and users is an important component of establishing a team's attempt to preserve historical materials, such as this photographic collection. A sense of panic has long gripped Native American historians as tribal customs, languages, and traditions have become in some cases extinct thanks to a lack of preservation efforts, to say nothing specifically of digital preservation. The Society's attempt to preserve these photographs can be one step among many toward bringing the Native voice back to the national conversation. In order to properly preserve this extensive photographic collection, the Society needs the expertise of digital information professionals and a solid preservation strategy. The core of such a strategy will revolve around the photograph's digital nature. The proposed approach will be to take a digital forensics perspective. As the author of Building Foundations for Digital Records Forensics, a comparative study of the concept of reproduction in digital records management and digital forensics notes, copying an entire storage device means that not only computer files displayed by the file system of the operating system are copied, but the hidden data, those not displayed by the OS file system, are also copied. The copying cannot happen within the system in which the data exist because copied data usually are further processed in a location different from the site where they were copied, and they also need to be isolated from the system for integrity purposes. Undertaking a digital forensics activity is a detailed process requiring a workflow that will be able to successfully address hardware issues, generation loss, obsolescence, and other potential stumbling blocks. Another explanation of digital forensics states that the point of locating and analyzing electronic data is to preserve any evidence in its most original form while performing a structured investigation by collecting, identifying, and validating the digital information for the purpose of reconstructing past events. In the Elizabeth County Historical Society scenario, we are the makers, and our job will be to establish the workflow that will culminate in the Society's ability to save and present these priceless photographs to the community for a variety of generations to come. The users, naturally, are the Society staff members, with whom we will work to ensure the accuracy and safety of the collection and its metadata. Applying an Activities such as digital forensics to the digital preservation of historical photographs not only affects the society's educational goals, it also has an impact on the broader goal of encouraging digital stewardship. In 2010, the Library of Congress decided that this goal was important enough to warrant the creation of an official organization to help focus on the preservation of digital content, including developing preservation standards and practices. Just as the mission of the National Digital Stewardship Alliance is to establish, maintain, and advance the capacity to preserve our nation's digital resources for the benefit of present and future generations, our purpose is the same, albeit focused more narrowly on the Elizabeth County Historical Society and the surrounding community. So, let's talk about what we'll need to introduce digital forensics into ECHS's workflow. We'll want at least two forensics workstations running Windows and or Linux. Most software runs in either of these environments, although some forensics programs are OSX compatible. Each workstation will need floppy drives and or external floppy readers for five and a quarter inch and three and a half inch floppies, zip drives and readers, and USB ports. Additional equipment will be necessary as we go along. Gareth Knight of King's College in London recommends having various adapters on hand in great quantities. We will also want a write blocker as the collection expands, but we may be able to begin by mounting all media as read-only, which is what King's College was doing in 2010.
Legacy hardware will undoubtedly be difficult to find, so some eBay hunting will be necessary. There are two big software suites under consideration for use at ECHS. The first is BitCurator, which is notable because the programs in its software stack are geared for archivists. It can be installed either as a standalone OS on a Linux machine, or it can be run as a virtual Linux machine within a Windows machine. Uh, to do that, you're going to need a virtual machine manager called VirtualBox, which is also freely available. And to do this, we will need a 64-bit machine with two processor cores, and at least 4 gigs of RAM partitioned to the virtual machine. The Sleuth Kit is another tool suite which is fairly well represented. Uh, it's a collection of command line programs, but a graphical interface overlay called Autopsy is available from the same developers. Older versions of Autopsy run only in Linux and OS X, and the newest version runs only in Windows. Uh, so you're going to have to choose. Unlike BitCurator, it's meant for forensics professionals proper, but it has been successfully used in archival settings. So both of these suites are based on free and open source software stacks. Um, all of it's very well documented, and for that reason, it's they're both really great as blueprints for building custom software suite. And the nice thing about these stacks is that if you don't want to install the entire thing on everybody's machine for training, you can just pick and choose the programs that we will need. Okay, staff participation. Uh, we're going to start off with phase one, which will involve ECHS seeking out a digital materials specialist who is capable of training existing staff who are willing and or able to handle more digital materials. So we will start off with a rather small team of specialists. And since we do um, think that the amount of incoming born digital materials will increase significantly over time, then we are probably going to enter into a phase in which all processing staff, anybody who's handling these born digital materials, will get relevant training, um, tool-specific training, for whatever they need. And there's a nice master's paper by Martin Gengenbach uh, in which he observes that you know, if you have your catalogers working with this stuff, they know the material better, better than anybody. So it makes sense to train them uh, to use these tools. And of course, all staff, regardless of whether or not they start off working with the forensics tools, are going to receive basic informational training in terms of workflow adjustment and basic concepts. So like we just mentioned before, all staff members will demonstrate a thorough understanding of the following concepts how born digital items differ from the rest of the collection, uh, why we are adopting forensic tools and tactics, and why our workflow is going to be turbulently changing over the, uh, the next couple of years. And um, that the rationale for us doing this is that the acquisition care and accessibility of these born digital materials is vital for the historical society's future and also the future of its patrons. Staff members who are on the forensics team will need to demonstrate both understanding and practical proficiency of the following. How to mount media is read-only, how to use a write blocker, uh, how to create and maintain disk images, and how to generate and validate checksums and what those are used for, and how to extract quality metadata, and also how to check for sensitive information that may need to be redacted as per donor instructions, and why we need to do this. ECHS's workflow is going to be changing quite a bit, and so it's quite important to realize that this change is not due only to our decision to foray into digital forensics. All workflows change as new technologies appear and funding fluctuates, as staff come and go, and as we learn more and better ways to work. Uh, the bottom line is that things change, and so must we. Several strengths and weaknesses can be determined when employing digital forensics tools. The first benefit is digital forensics' ability to assist in preserving digital objects as a preliminary step in long-term preservation. The capture of system-related information of these digital images prevents compatibility issues or immediate preservation needs. We can extract preservation-related information from the images to establish a context of the record, analyze data within the record, and determine the needed hardware or software to access the material.
Throughout this investigative process, we should identify the value of these images in order to devise preservation strategies that will maintain the value throughout the record's use. Electronic records frequently change hands, are open and closed, or are updated in formats. Digital forensics determines what has been changed in a digital object, what has been deleted or hidden on a storage device, and any tampering or corruption. Next, digital forensics acts as a collaborative tool with our stakeholders. Once discovering, recovering, or validating the received information, the staff at the ECHS could discuss with donors certain contextual aspects of the digital object, such as conflicts in the file's creation date. Along with this, the archivists at the ECHS can work with patrons in gaining an idea how they want to access digital materials. Would they like to access them in their original software environment, like Microsoft Word 97, or receive an optical recognized PDF? The staff could then seek out specific preservation tools or information consultants to create such options. Another benefit for digital forensics is its integration to our archival methodology practices. Acquiring and appraising digital records changes with exploratory activities. When receiving a digital object and taking time to appraise the context of the record, we can understand when the record was created, how it was produced, and what allowed it to be accessible and usable. This helps the ECHS determine and prioritize its future preservation tasks. For example, these digital images may just need to be upgraded to a newer format as opposed to being recreated or reproduced in a newer software environment. Through, through forensics, the ECHS staff may even determine that some of the digital pictures are too difficult to preserve and should be withheld from preservation. The last benefit to digital forensics is its ability to strengthen an archival institution. Digital preservation is a constant concern with the growing creation of digital materials and changes in makeup of archival holdings. The ECHS staff can standardize their processing habits by using investigative forensic practices as the first step in appraising and preserving new acquisitions. Next, understanding how to retrieve and view the digital context of electronic record makes the ECHS staff appear technologically experienced. Finally, by taking time to use forensic tools and practices, the institution takes on a trustworthy role in receiving cultural heritage collections by identifying traits in the digital record that support their authenticity and reliability. Yet with these strengths, digital forensics activities do have weaknesses. First, while these tools are typically free or open source programs, they rely on other resources like internet accessibility, storage devices, and dedicated staff time to operate. Second, several forensic programs are required to work in conjunction to extract and validate. Lastly, while this whole process enables us to discover, recover, or validate a digital object, the actual tasks or products needed in preserving these electronic materials are not defined. Digital forensics only reveals current preservation issues. Therefore, the integration of digital forensics into archival practices presents some challenges. Staff require the training with these programs and other validation tasks. This again strengthens the skills and competency of the ECHS staff. Next, collection, appraisal, and processing policies should be revised to include tasks of digital forensics. This standardizes activity within the institution as well as signals to patrons that the records are being properly maintained. Final challenge is determining the preceding preservation tasks for the validated records. Experimenting with case studies could allow the ECHS staff to develop a checklist or test system that corresponds with digital forensics activities and results in appropriate preservation approaches. In conclusion, the use of digital forensics at the Elizabeth County Historical Society is necessary as the Elizabeth County Historical Society has acquired digital records in several forms in the past couple of decades. These records require special attention in order to be preserved for future use. This is particularly important for the most recent accession of digital images created by a prominent Native American artist. The use of digital forensics will validate the image's preservation status through providing provenance, original order, chain of custody, and identifying other sensitive material. Native American records are not only important to the Native American community, but to the nation's history as there has been a lack of preservation efforts in the past. This makes it even more important to preserve these images. The Digital Preservation Plan consists of creating at least two digital forensic workstations complete with the necessary software and hardware. Plan on hiring one employee that is specialized in digital forensics to train our current staff members.
Ideally, the hope is to have a staff that can meet the current and future challenges of digital preservation. We, as the makers of these digital records, will make a point of educating our users on the importance of digital preservation for the record's unforeseen future values. Elizabeth County Historical Society should plan on integrating digital forensics into our archival methodology to strengthen the archive through its current and future digital holdings. Our recommendation is to hire digital preservation specialists, train the staff, create policies in the collection through current and future digital materials, and research the next step in digital preservation. Most importantly, it is to preserve these priceless local digital records.